Welcome to the Hyper Polyglot Activist, Learn Languages, Make a Difference. My name is Dr. Carlos Sierra Lopez, and today I'm joined by Dr. Timothy Douglas. Tim, welcome to the show. Uh, hello, Carlos, and thank you very much for having me on your show. Of course. We're here today to discuss El Ukrainian, which, if I'm not mistaken, is a wordplay between LU, Lancaster University, where you work, and Ukrainian. Indeed, yes. Um, I work at Lancaster University in Northern England, you know, in the United Kingdom, and we uh, internally often abbreviate our institution to LU, Lancaster University. Mm -hmm. And it just struck me as well that um, you, you being the first word of Ukrainian, let's just try to sort of save space and fuse, you know, two concepts right. indeed. That works, that works. That reminds me of, of other initiatives with other universities and languages such as UCL Ladino which combines UCL, University of oh, right. Los Angeles, with, with Ladino. Um, okay, so El Ukrainian as a conference is now approaching its fourth edition, coming up January 13th on Friday. Yes. And I would like to start by asking you how you started to learn Ukrainian. Right. Well, uh, as it will be uh, no surprise to anyone that there have been some tragic events in Ukrainian since in Ukraine since uh, uh, February, and I actually started to learn Ukrainian on the twenty fourth of February. Uh, that was day one of learning. Um, the, my motivation was well, um, what can I do to help? And you know, we as polyglots, we can learn languages um, quicker than the average person because we have more experience of language learning in general. And also, sometimes we have learned similar languages, which also accelerates the acquisition of a new language. And I uh, have uh, been uh, learning you know, Russian and Polish you know, for many years. I collaborate with you know, colleagues in both you know, Russia and uh, Poland in my, yeah. as a, in my um, uh, research. And so I thought, um, well, Ukrainian is known to, well, it's a Slavic language, it's the same family. It's um, uh, known to be sort of closely related to um, Russian and also Polish. So I thought, let's try to learn it. I think I can do it more quickly. And one of the nicest things I found was um, that thanks to its proximity to Russian and Polish, it's possible to absorb the language you know, quite easily using um, what some people refer to as you know, the natural method. So simply by consuming content, Mm -hmm. And by comparing it to you know, Russian or Polish, uh, you can um, firstly, you know, see the similarities, but you can also see the differences. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would, um, st I started by looking at YouTube um, uh, videos for um, Polish people who wanted to learn Ukrainian, and mm -hmm. then you, you know, you can because I can also read the Cyrillic, Cyrillic script thanks to Russian. The mm -hmm. you can quite easily see which words are similar to Polish and also, you know, which ones, you know, are different. Mm -hmm. And luckily, um, in the Slavic languages, I've learned many grammatical concepts are the same. So you can see, for instance, what ending uh, in, you know, Ukrainian would, or, you, know, you know, we have lots and lots of endings in the Slavic language. Mm -hmm. What ending would correspond in Ukrainian, you know, to a, an ending in uh, Russian or in um, in, in, po in, in Polish. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then I, that's, I, to, 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 to fi 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 finish my answer, um, mm -hmm. my motivation was, okay, it's, uh, you know, as you know very well, um, many people are simply delighted by the fact that you are learning their language at all. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so in that way, I wanted to sort of hopefully sort of show some respect support you know for mm -hmm. uh ukraine for their situation hopefully mm -hmm. make some ukrainians glad that i was learning ukrainian mm -hmm. but then i also thought well um unfortunately in war there were always uh, refugees mm -hmm. and it's likely that there will very likely there will be you know refugees in my country as well mm -hmm. and they may need some sort of linguistic support um mm -hmm. or, in the form of I know translations or mm -hmm. you know interpreting or maybe 
they may find it useful to talk to somebody in mm-hmm. um, in, in Ukrainian. Um, and luckily, it, both have been true. I've been able to offer some help to um, people by doing, you know, trans uh, translations for it's made mm-hmm. this a volunteer organization also by a high peer member um ariel cohen who you know mm-hmm. and um they um do a translation of you know medical documents uh, mm-hmm. and you know other documents and naturally there's been a big demand lately in for translations of documents particularly for some patients with complicated um mm-hmm. diseases such as or conditions such as you know cancer mm-hmm. and then it's very important to know you know what treatment mm-hmm. they've received before i've also um in 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 lancaster where i work sometimes you know people sort of you know i, I go to these meetings uh, for you know ukrainian mm-hmm. refugees and get to know some of them and then some sometimes they write to me you know if they have you know they can write in ukrainian if they want with mm-hmm. questions about sort of life in general mm-hmm. in the uk mm-hmm. well incredible congratulations on this very useful work and i think you've touched up on two aspects that are crucial to the way I think we both understand languages. One is more technical, which is language acquisition through comprehensible input rather than language learning. And in this case, also in comparative fashion, drawing up on the languages that you already know, in this case, languages from the Slavic family. And the other one is has to do with the activist component of the hyperpolygon activists, mm-hmm. right? That's why we say learn languages make a difference because we're not just in the business of being dancing monkeys, dancing in one language and another in a trivial fashion, Mm -hmm. which is a respectable endeavor, but not what we do. What we try to do is to combine polyglossia or hyperpolyglossia with activism. How can we use what we know and our ability as polyglots, as you just said, to make the world a better place? And one way is to learn the language of people who are oppressed or find themselves in Mm -hmm. times of difficulty. And so that's a very commendable effort. And... What do you think then, if we try to play devil's advocate, what do you think about people who say we shouldn't mix languages with politics? Right. Well, um, I think in an ideal world, we wouldn't have to mix uh, uh, anything, you know, with politics. I mean, mm-hmm. people talk about ideals such as you know, sport should be separate, you know, from politics. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, science should be uh, separate from politics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, um, although it, that that would be nice in many ways, um, unfortunately, you know, politics mixes itself into mm-hmm. a lot of these activities, whether we like it or not. So, mm-hmm. to give you an example from science, um, you know. Um, many countries have, you know, forbidden, so, you know, collaboration between, uh, you know, scientists, you know, from Russia and from the, um, uh, you know, from, from my country or from other countries. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, that, you know, that's one of the sad things about, you know, war is that a lot often is that the, it's the little people who don't necessarily support, mm-hmm. you know, sort of tyrants uh, such mm-hmm. as Putin who, mm-hmm. you know, um, who suffer the most from that. Mm-hmm. Um, Regarding, uh, you know, language and politics, I think whenever, unfortunately, whenever you have people, you are going to have politics. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, language is, you know, some way in which, you know, people express themselves. It's also a language in which politics is, you know, conducted. So, unfortunately, I think that politics manages to uh, find its way, you know, into everything. Mm -hmm. Um, In the case of, um, um, you know, Ukrainian, one thing that... um, it made me aware. I was very, you know, ignorant about sort of Ukraine mm-hmm. before um, uh, the um, the current sort of war started, mm-hmm. and but what I still feel that I've only sort of scratched the surface, uh, to use an English expression, regarding the um, you know the linguistic situation in Ukraine. Um, mm-hmm. What one thing I have noticed is that. Um, in Western European countries, I know you come from Spain, where many languages are spoken. Uh, very, and in the United Kingdom, there are other languages spoken, such as Welsh, but sort of at most are not spoken to the same degree as mm-hmm. I would guess. You know, Catalan. You know, in Spain, for instance, um, there's this idea that okay, you have one people. So therefore, you have uh, one nation. Therefore, you have one language. Mm-hmm. Now, I think in the case of Ukraine. Um, that's not necessarily sort of the case. Um, mm-hmm. There are, I've noticed many people, many 
know, people who have come from Ukraine, mm-hmm. um, you know, have said, you know, I'm Ukrainian, but I speak Russian as a first language, or I have two first languages, mm-hmm. um, you know, mm-hmm. Russian and Ukrainian. So, mm-hmm. and I am also aware that there are different you know, dialects of Ukrainian and that the Ukrainian that may be spoken in one part of the country is not necessarily the same as is spoken in another. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I think w- what I'm trying to get at is that, um, you know, what it's learning Ukraine has helped has um helped, sort of helped us sort of challenge some of the assumptions that I had, you know, regarding uh you know the linguistic situation in Ukraine and mm-hmm. you know how sort of li- that language is not necessarily um associated with one particular nation mm-hmm. or with mm-hmm. one particular sort of identity or um, mm-hmm. um or po- political view, if that yeah. if that answers mm-hmm. your question. Yeah, that's that's very interesting to emphasize. So I got a different points for, from what you said the first one is that you're absolutely correct to say that politics mixes itself with languages that's the way they are that's always my answer when people say oh we don't mix language with politics is how how could you not mm. it's intrinsic mm. right it's something that people do therefore it's political therefore it's mediated by politics so rather than trying to remove ourselves from the political aspect of language i think we should engage in that and just make our position clear that hyperpolyglossia and polyglossia is necessarily activist we're just emphasizing that activist component but it's always already there even when we don't process that consciously right and the second one is what you said about your study of ukrainian bringing new awareness as to the linguistic situation of ukraine the fact that ukrainians some of them speak russian too sometimes it's their first language as opposed to the second one i'm sure you're familiar with uh, putin's statement early in in february i believe from last year that ukraine is not a language mm-hmm. and that goes that goes to that speaks exactly to that post-westphalian equivalence between nation state and language because putin is thinking from the perspective of the russian empire or bigger russia or greater russia he thinks well this is part of russia and therefore since russia is one nation one state then it should be one nation and one language right it's making that false equivalence mm-hmm. but even if we dismantle that pers- pers- imperialistic perspective and we reduce ourselves to the nation state perspective it is still the case that most people post westphalian post 1648 think about nations as being equivalent to states and languages right so mm-hmm. i do think nations have le- at least one language that unifies them maybe might be two or three the difficulty comes when we bring the state in right and so the state is a centralizing agent of languages mm-hmm. so in the case of france for instance there were many many different languages and now french is spoken which was the standardized version mm-hmm. right or the mm-hmm. same in italy the same in spain etc particularly under authoritarian regimes such as Francoist dictatorship, mm-hmm. which downplay the role of so-called peripheral languages, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Which is already a downplaying of those mm-hmm. languages. <laughs> and so, yeah, I think it's very important to distinguish not only language from nation state, but also nation from state, let alone from empire or something bigger or more authoritarian. Yes. Well, um, I should emphasize that um, you mentioned that uh, learning Ukraine has brought me new awareness. I would, I would express it as saying learn ukraine has made me realize how unaware i am about yeah. you know lots uh yeah. of the um of, of what happens in ukraine but it just it it shows that you know, one should not make sort of too many sort of you know assumptions mm-hmm. you know ab- about you know uh, a, a country i mean i've mm-hmm. i remember a story uh from a colleague mm-hmm. that um how um to give you an example of such a misunderstanding mm-hmm. um a colleague of mine told me that um um an interpret at a meeting of um, British people and Ukrainians, uh, an interpreter said, right, "I'm just going to translate into Russian for these Ukrainians." And this suggestion was met with disgust by the British yeah. people. But it just showed that it w- that these uh, Ukrainians it was actually what they preferred. So actually, mm. they, and actually, the translation was for the benefit of them. But it, it oh, shows right. this uh, perception of you know, one nation, one right. language, and that mm-hmm. Russian must necessarily be a um, um, a, a foreign language of, right, of the right, enemy right, to right. everyone. Yes, you see. So, um, yeah. mm-hmm. and um, 
One, um, personally, you know, I, I, I love sort of, you know, Russian language as well. And my hope is that, um, you know, unfortunately, as you know, you, as you mentioned, you know, politics and language, you can't really separate them. Mm -hmm. The, um, I suspect there will be, you know, less, um, uh, you know, interest in sort of, you know, learning sort of, you know, Russian. Uh, however, why, why I hope that will not happen, um, or to happen to a lesser extent, Firstly, you know, by le Russian is the language used, you know, by many sort of Ukrainians, for instance, mm -hmm. and it, you know, you can still make some sort of connection, you know, with Ukrainians via that. Also, I would say that, you know, even if, if you consider Russian to be the, um, the language of, you know, the enemy, mm -hmm. you know, at least, you know, you should try to understand your enemy better, you know, mm -hmm. so that you may, maybe you will, you know, see that your enemy in some ways is not as bad as you thought, or, you know, if you want to defeat your enemy, you should understand your enemy better. So I think uh, I, what I hope, whatever people feel about the uh, Putin and his regime, I hope that does not translate completely into a rejection of, you know, Russian language, you know, and culture for the reasons I gave. Um, Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I completely agree with that. Yes. I think it's, it's very important to stress yes. that... Yes. Just, just because we support Ukrainians and, and their languages in plural, that does not, that does not mean that it will be wise for us to engage in Russophobia or phobia, glotophobia vis-a-vis -vis Russian. Quite the opposite. Russian is, is a very interesting language even to understand Ukrainian, Ukrainians themselves. Yes. And, and also, you know, um, in many other countries of the former Soviet Union, mm -hmm. you know, such as, you know, Central Asian republics, or right. to give you an example, you know, Russian, you know, is widely used and it can mm -hmm. be help in my, I, again, I don't have experience with Central Asia, but I can imagine that it can be helped as a sort of bridge to get to know these cultures better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to come back to, uh, two of the points of the, um, that you mentioned at the start of the discussion, you talk about the activism point of view, but there's also, you know, the comparative, the educational, the intellectual part. I think learning Russian can also help you, you know, to understand, you know, other Slavic peoples uh, you know, and, uh, and, and other Slavic languages and people yeah, you know, in general yeah. so better. If I may come back quickly to your point uh, made by Putin, saying that Ukrainian is not a language, uh -huh. I hope that um, if uh, Putin is... Um, uh, brought to justice that uh, part of his punishment will uh, in will be a, a ukrainian course just to um demonstrate and that ukraine even you know, although i have relatively little experience with ukrainian i can you know i could tell from an early stage that it, it is certainly it is not um just like russian um right. it one it, for me, Ukrainian is like a delicious of cocktail of you know Russian and Polish with a little bit of Czech. I say that simply because those are the languages I'm familiar with. Mm -hmm. But you can look at the vocabulary and you can see that actually a great deal of it does come from you know Polish as well. Mm -hmm. And so um, certainly, I mean, I think even somebody with uh, quite a, a low level of Russian. And so Polish and Ukrainian can see Ukrainian is definitely not, um, you know, Russian. Yeah. yeah, out of the two linguistic criteria that linguists typically consider to speak of languages as being different, I would say that there is great lexical difference between Ukrainian and, and Russian. And at the same time, this does not preclude certain mutual intelligibility, but as I said, the lexical difference is remarkable. Um, and but as we know from a critical perspective, also ultimately the distinction between languages is is, is politically sanctioned, mm -hmm. right? So I think what what Putin, I, I don't think Putin is as unaware about the Ukrainian language as he wants to pretend, mm -hmm. as as he as he pretends. Mm -hmm. And I think that his statement is meant to be performative, right? Mm -hmm. I yes. wish Ukrainian was was the mm -hmm. same as Russian because I wish Ukraine was part of Russia. Yes, right. Uh, yeah. So. I have more questions concerning the, the conference. Um, why did you start in particular to organize these events other than the, the, the ideological and the um, political, the activist side? Uh, what did you see logistically that could make sense when it comes to organizing this event at Lancaster University? Is it hybrid? Is it online? Well, it's it's hybrid. Um, to explain what why I started to organize these conferences, 
It um, part of it was uh, there are parallels with why I started to learn Ukrainian. I um, I have experience in your know, organizing sort of conferences, including sort of in my field, which is biomaterials. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, and so I thought if I'm maybe more used to organizing conferences than the average, you know, um, academic at a university. Um, I can probably organize a linguistic conference. Well, a con con a, a, I know that the word linguist and linguistic, they ha can have more than one meaning. So I'll, right. I'll say a, con a conference on Ukrainian language. Right. Uh, more, e maybe with more confidence than, um, um, than some other people. So I thought, it was a quite a spontaneous decision, but I thought there were many people uh, who are, you know, learning Ukrainian. And you know, the, one of the points of conferences is to, sort of you, to unite them and also yeah. sort of to put them in contact with each other and let them share their experiences. So right. I thought to myself, well, maybe it would be a nice thing to do. And uh, I was very pleased at the response that I uh, received from um, people who learned Ukrainian online and also from some people in New Lancaster as well who were interested in you in meeting Ukrainians and also um there were many ways I think in which um you like as you you know very well there are many aspects to language learning part of it is showing how the um learning of a particular language like Ukrainian can benefit people so I had you know speakers from you know respond crisis translation to illustrate you know the need for people who can translate from mm -hmm. Ukrainian mm -hmm. also um we had um um people from um a, a uh, Global Voices, which is a an organization which amplifies the uh, you know writings of you know Ukrainians sort of authors or translates uh, material into Ukrainian, so it is more uh, accessible for Ukrainian speakers. Mm -hmm. We also had um, people who uh, you know, teach Ukrainian to give you know advice on that, and then we also had learners of Ukrainian, including some of our you know colleagues from Hypea, who explained how they learnt ukrainian and how other people can learn it better mm -hmm. and so um and um um also you know some people have you know contacted me and said it was great that we you know we made some you know contacts you know at these conferences so that you know you know for instance i know one person said if we ha there were we had some sort of communication difficulties with the people we are hosting from ukraine but you know thanks to a conference um um uh, a contact we sort of met at the conference you know we had it all um we could sort of resolve you know the problem much more much more easily mm -hmm. so yes yeah, so ba 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 and um ba basically i i expand my um network of sort of contacts mm -hmm. as well and it's 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 fun to organize so mm -hmm. I, that, that, that gives me the motivation to continue great great and that is sort of presumably about a year ago or less so and it's in, in its fourth edition yes. which means is it organized how often right i i have to admit that it's uh, sort of a more a spontaneous of you know event mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. i the first uh, time was an experiment to see how people would react and mm -hmm. there was enough um motivation for one to make Want to continue with the second one, and so when I have time, um, I um, I try to organize it. Usually, it's not when during the term time I have a lot of you know other um, responsibilities, mm -hmm. but in the holidays, uh, such mm -hmm. as we have a next um, uh, next uh, uh, conference on the the thirteenth of of January, mm -hmm. a hybrid event, and so then I'll, I'll 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 hold the fourth one, and then hopefully the fifth one when I have another window. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. And do, do you have any specific plans on how that might continue? Um, does, does it matter what the unfolding of the political events is when it comes to the future of this conference? How do you see the future of this conference going? Well, what I hope is that um, people have become interested in Ukrainian not just because of the geopolitical sort of situation, mm -hmm. but also because many people will have you know met Ukrainians and for, who have been sort of displaced for you know tragic reasons, mm -hmm. but at least um, um, that has given them sort of an insight into sort of Ukrainian culture. And you know how it is when you can; it's so much easier to learn a language when you can put associate you know the language is with emotional. Um, a sort of experiences that it's not just mm -hmm. Ukraine is not just a word on a textbook, but you know right. it's um right. it's 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 the the language of you know, the, the the of 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 your friends that you speak or right. with your colleagues. Mm -hmm. So 
um if if this this um this um um if the war was to uh end you know, tomorrow and you know, the russian federation's uh, armed forces would completely uh, retreat from ukraine mm -hmm. That's one. Re that's the main reason why I think there would still be an interest uh, in learning Ukrainian. But also, um, you know, there will people want to rebuild Ukraine. People will want to strengthen Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And so, I think for at least the foreseeable future, um, regardless of the um, military situation, there will be an you know interest in um, having closer links with Ukrainian. And you, know, as you know very well language is very good you know, for links and one more thing is that w there are many refugees now in you know, western european countries the question is will they all return to ukraine as soon as you know the um, um you know, political stability is achieved um i'm not sure about that i think there will be you know people who will remain and Two questions come up: How can we help to, you know, integrate um, Ukrainians into our societies? But, and I think, you know, coming back to activism, I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're very familiar with the um, the work of, you know, Moses McCormick. You know, all the videos that he did, mm -hmm. uh, where he would, um, you know, learn the languages of immigrants. Right, and and you can if you you can see in his videos yeah. how you know they're so glad that he's learning their languages, and actually he's showing our, you know western societies that there are so many languages out there mm -hmm. that and there's you many people um you know think about learning only prestigious languages such right. as your western european languages maybe use of chinese japanese korean mm -hmm. etc but there's so many ways in which language can make a difference to people mm -hmm. even if it's just you know, making somebody's day by speaking their language you also you mm -hmm. make you're doing something good and just in our own societies. And so also I hope that um, you know, Ukrainian will sort of you know enrich you know sort of our society. And I hope also that people will be more receptive sort of to Ukrainian than they have been to the um, um the languages and the cultures of some other immigrants, you know, in our societies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um I think there will be um good reason for western societies to keep being interested in ukrainian and engaging with the language in the foreseeable future mm -hmm. yes i'm reminded here of um, richard simcott's statement that as polyglots one of the things that we can do to make a difference is to learn the language of minoritized people and i think that the learning of ukrainian and during this time can serve as a blueprint for the learning of other minoritized languages in our society so i completely agree with that and just last question for somebody who's listening to us at home and says, well, you know, this is very interesting. I would like to actually collaborate and participate. What can that person do? Right. Well, you can find me uh, on the website of Lancaster University. If you wish to participate in the conference, either as a speaker, if you wish to attend in person or online via Microsoft Teams, you're very welcome to write to me. You know, I will give, tell you how to come or uh, I will, you know, send you the link to uh, take part in you know, via Microsoft Teams. I you know, love to get in contact with other people who are learning mm -hmm. Ukrainian and who are loving, uh, who are learning the Slavic languages uh, in general. I think in the language learning um, you know, community, I, that... Slavic languages tend to be rather the poor relation of the R Romance languages and the Germanic languages, yeah. uh, although, you know, half of Europe, you know, speaks uh, Slavic languages. So mm -hmm. I'm delighted to see, you know, you know, people who have an interest in, in, the, in this part of the world and want to support them. Mm -hmm. I will make sure to leave the link in the description to your website and contact details so can, people can participate and make this even a bigger event. So yeah. thank, thank you so much for participating. And I wish you a very successful fourth edition of El Ukrainian and all the best with your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me, Carlos. As, as always, it was a very stimulating discussion. Likewise. Thank you. Yeah.